Okay, so yeah, the topic today is bridging school and the real world. So we know the IO is a new, but you know, it's also fast growing and it's also uh, attracting a lot of students across the globe. And we, you know, in Taiwan, we also have a lot of students who are so interested in, you know, economics. And actually they really, they are so happy that there is the IEO because they can challenge themselves. They can also meet new friends from uh, everywhere in the world so that they can know that actually there are a lot of students who also uh, like, you know, economics so much, just like them. Okay, so yeah, first of all, we have I have to you know introduce my team because we believe that institution uh, itself is very important. And so, as you can see here, we have a structure, a clear structure with different bodies uh, responsible for different uh, tasks. So, first of all, we have collaborated with universities and companies. So, just like you know the icons, the uh, trademarks, we have collaborated with. Uh, the, school, so the School of Big Data Management from a university, and we also collaborate with HSBC Taiwan. And in the structure, there's also something that is worth mentioning, that is the Independent Academic Committee, because I myself is, uh, I myself and work, uh, uh, work on, you know, administrative tasks. So we should have another body, uh, especially responsible for uh, academic affairs, for example, question settings, or maybe uh, different quality checks uh, in different uh, situations to make sure that we have high quality uh, stuff for students. And we also have checks and balances. That's like something like politics. But anyway, this, this is just like we have the executive committee as well as the supervisory committee so that we can have everything you know, coordinated uh, with, each, with each other. Yeah. So this is how we have grown. In 2019, I've, I fly to uh, yeah, St. Petersburg and that was my last chance to, to take part in the IEO in person. But yeah, I still took part in the IEO for three years in, the, in a row because you know, they were all conducted online. And I mean, in 2020 and 2021 and in 2022 this year, we will also, yeah, it, it is announced that you know, everything will be online due to the pandemic. And yeah, so over the past few years, it is obvious that we have, you know, some achievements. The first year we, you know, in the first year we participated in the IEO, we got five bronze medals. And this, in the second year, we participated in the Latvia, uh, in the IEO Latvia, we got two silvers and three bronzes. Actually, we made a lot of progress during the time we uh, have been involved in the competition. And we also uh, envision that we can get more. It's like we can get a gold medal or more than one so that we can have more uh, achievements for uh, you know, showing that we are doing very well in our economics education in, in this sense. So uh, yeah, so to talk about economics education in Taiwan, uh, this, these are just like some of the basics about our curriculum. It is actually not an independent subject for high schoolers. Uh, actually, it is included in the subject called civics and society. So in, you know, in this subject, there might be uh, courses about law, about, about politics, about sociology, and you know, economics is just one part of it. And yeah, it is required, but you know, it, it's like the total hours of the of learning would be just 30 hours in the high school curriculum. So in this sense, it's like, you know, students who really, who, 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 who are interested in uh, economics would not have enough opportunities to get to know uh, either theories or, you know, uh, some applications about how economics, how economics can be introduced or applied in day-to-day uh, -day experience. So this is why we have our aspirations as follows. We try, we aspire to provide, to offer, to create uh, different approaches to economics learning. And we also want to be a bridge between uh, theory and practice for students, for Taiwanese students. Yeah. So this is why we have rolled out a lot of events, not only the national competition, but also a lot of, you know, routine or you know ad hoc events so that we can uh, include as many students as we can so that you know uh, just like enthusiasts in economics can join 
and also they can know their friends, they can know, know their future competitors, and also you know it is like a good, very good chance for them to get to know each other. Yeah, so this is like our events uh, throughout the year. Actually, you know, uh, at the very beginning we have the IO camp, and also uh, after the IO camp we have our preliminary together with uh, our final, and after the two you know, uh, rounds of the selection annually, we also have our book camp. And that camp is just like, you know, it sounds like something military, but actually that is just like a two week uh, camp in which students can uh, get to know each other because they will be on the same team in the IEO, in the coming IEO, right? In July or in August. So this is why we try our best to, you know, gather them together and they also live together, stay together, work together so that they can have enough, you know, team spirit where they can also do some team building uh, things to make sure they are on the same team and they are on, you know, they are, they are, they are really present, representing Taiwan on, uh, in an IEO. And also after an IEO is held, you know, after the great event, we will have some public workshops to share what we have witnessed, what we have experienced, what we have seen during the time we rolled out where we participated in different events or in the IEO so that we can have more students included uh, in our national competition together with, you know, some other uh, public workshops or panels or, uh, you know, just like smaller discussions where students can share their ideas or uh, whatever they have uh, thought about in economics. And as for the national competition, this is very similar to the IO, just like what, uh, uh, you know, what their countries have done. We also uh, include uh, multiple choice questions together with uh, open-ended questions. And they are both paper-based, oh, sorry. They are both paper-based and individual-based. And we test students' literacy in economics and finance, just like you know, what the IEO emphasizes. We want them to you know, have basic skills about uh, economics, and at least they should have some financial literacies. And we also uh, expect students to have some basic skills in, in math. For example, uh, they should know some uh, mathematical skills for solving uh, problems or you know, solving uh, like questions or whatever that that those that may happen in an economics problem. And also we want students to you know, uh, have uh, their concerns about uh, anything that is happening in the world, in society, or in the international community. So this is why we would you know, require our independent academic committee to pay, so pay close attention to what's going on in society or in the international community so that they can uh, set questions ba based on uh, real life scenarios where they can ensure that the quality or contents of questions are really, you know, good for high schoolers or, you know, the difficulty of uh, questions uh, is just appropriate for high schoolers in Taiwan. And also they are responsible for grading as well. So here I can show you some of our questions over uh, the past few years. For example, this one, this is rather a, you know, a traditional economics question, but this is uh, with a lot of math so that you can see there are different uh, equations for curves and they have to you know, solve some math problems so that they can figure out uh, which statement uh, is correct where they have to know, uh, you know, what it really means, uh, what it really means by, uh, you know, the shift of a supply curve or whatever like that. In, a setting in an, in an economic setting. So yeah, together with this, we also have different, you know, this is like a question we have this year. So this is like what, uh, yeah, it's about the game theory, but you know, it sounds where it looks very complicated uh, to students, but you know, this is like, you know, we just put, uh, you know, what's going on in the world into a uh, question setting. So this is like, if, students can pay attention carefully and they would they as they read uh the question the text and the table the numbers they would easily figure out you know the correct answer to 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 choose from the four options over here because you know 
they are just like in the numbers and they just compare the numbers and know like how many, how much payoff they can get uh, from this scenario. I know this is a bit, you know, political, but anyway, this is just like what we want students to know because everything in economics should be uh, relevant to life. Not only the, not only the life, you know, in their surroundings, but also in our international community. So yeah, this is just like an example of what we have today this year. And yeah, just like this, you know, we also want we also want students to have some financial literacy. So we would, you know, require them to understand uh, meanings in a financial statement of a company, for example, so that they can uh, calculate uh, how much tax they should pay if they run a company or a factory or whatever like that. So, you know, just like we have a lot of you know questions like these. And not only do we have multiple choice questions, just like what I have mentioned, we also have you know uh, open questions. So this is also a problem of what we have this year. You know, this is a typical uh, macroeconomics problem, and it talks about you know GDP per capita and also GDP uh, per capita when uh, PPP purchasing power parity. Uh, is taken into consideration. And we want them to compare why there are differences between figures, between numbers, and how they can interpret these numbers with their reasoning. Like that. And also they have to figure out where at least they have to indicate some you know, existing problems and maybe they have to discuss possible uh, you know, solutions to existing issues. This is not the question over here, but you know, in this kind of question, we would like to uh, invite students invite students to answer some of the questions based on you know, problem solving. And together with this, we also have you know uh, relatively relatively traditional uh, economics questions. So this is like a principal and agent problem, and we also want them to you know illustrate uh, a conflict you know in their daily life or you know whatever they have witnessed, ex experienced, or seen in their daily life so that they can you know, uh, take it as an example for a discussion. And also they need to find out uh, good solutions to a principal agent problem like this. So not only do we want students to have you know, theory kept in mind, we also want them to you know, sort of you know, relate what they have learned from the internet, from the textbook, from any kinds of materials they have, you know, they, they have ever had and you know life experience and also you know, issues uh, that are ongoing in the world and yeah this is just like what you know the how the national competition is conducted you know that you can see the date march 5th 2022 it was just like a couple of weeks ago and yeah so students are working on their uh, open-ended questions and it also it's just like the io we allow them to you know have a an appropriate you know, calculator with them and also a paper uh, dictionary so that they can, uh, if they have any problems, any issues with you know, the language or you know, some simple calculation, they can have this kind of you know, uh, tool. And also, yeah, after the selection in the national preliminary, we have our national final and that is uh, also based on the spirit of business cases in the IEO. So yeah, the grading system, grading dimensions are so similar to uh, what the IEO has, analytical thinking, conceptual thinking, quantitative, quantitative thinking, and also communication skills. And, you know, we also want this to be a very good opportunity for students to learn from practitioners, professionals. So in this case, we in, in this session, in this uh, stage, we invite usually, you know, economics professors or maybe uh, also professors from, you know, finance, departments of finance, as well as like, you know, some practitioners, for example, HSBC bankers or Boston uh, consulting group consultants, so that they can really learn from, you know, people who uh, work in the industry. So, you know, this is like a good interaction, good interaction opportunity for them to know each other. Maybe this will be something good for their future. I, I don't mean they will work for, you know, these companies in the future, but, you know, this is just like they can learn from what, what's happening in the industry and they can also have, you know, uh, something kept in mind so that they can, uh, you know, just like 
you know, this is like a seed, and you know, maybe someday it will sprout and become something so different. And also during the time they wait for uh, final results, we will have, you know, uh, get speeches on, you know, uh, economics relevant fields. For example, last year we invited a professor uh, to talk about big data or data analysis uh, in Taiwan because this is one of our major industries and we also want, want this to be, we also wanted this to be, you know, something that is, uh, yeah, what they, what students should know, should know. And yeah, so in the final, this is like one of the questions we have ever had. So just like, you know, we want students to analyze the bookstore industry because we know, you know, just like because of ebooks, because the uh, popularity of ebooks or, you know, online shopping for books, you know, uh, traditional bookstores are literally dying in Taiwan. And we also want, want them to analyze, you know, this kind of situation for bookstores in Taiwan and also provide more suggestions for them. You know, this is like, you know, how we bridge what they have learned in their life experience uh, in our you know, daily life scenarios. And this is just, okay, following are some, you know, pictures, some photos we have ever taken. And this is like, you know, during the time they prepared for uh, their presentations. And also this is like the scene they presented to uh, a professor. So this is an economics professor. And he, she is being asked questions about uh, like her conclusion, the logic behind her conclusion or reasoning or whatever uh, that lies behind, you know, her uh, case study. And also this would be uh, a BCG manager uh, listening to you know, the uh, presentation from a guy and yeah, just like what, what you can see on the screen, you know, this is like they can create uh, slides with a lot of highlights of, for example, a SWOT analysis where maybe some of the solutions they have uh, thought about they have thought of so that they can, you know, really provide solutions or proposals for an industry or a certain company. And this is like a one of the HSBC heads in Taiwan, and she is giving, you know, remarks in the final in the ceremony so that you know students or guests or parents can really know, okay, how students have done, and also, uh, you know, uh, just like this is like a recap of everything of the day. And so that students can really, you know, get what they uh, have a comprehensive, have comprehensive, comprehensive understanding of what, what has, uh, you know, of everything that happened throughout the day. Yeah, like that. And also we have our book camp after the competition and it is like a two week uh, camp, including uh, board and lodging. So yeah, they live and work together. And you know, in the camp, we want them to have, we, we want them to build, uh, to build up their team spirit. And also, we will invite lecturers to talk about uh, economics and finance. And also, you know, one of the important things we value, we emphasize so much is good works. We want our students to go outdoors. We don't want them to be locked indoors throughout you know, the fourteen days. It's not like a quarantine thing, you know, we just want them to go outdoors and maybe they can also collect some of the data they have experienced from, you know, a shop or a department store, a shopping center or whatever like that, you know, this can be good resources for them to do, to do future business case studies. So this is why we value the notion of Woodworks so much. And because, you know, this book camp is targeted at, you know, winning uh, in the IELTS, so we also include like mocks and self-led study groups so that they can really check what they uh, have learned, or they can also discuss with each other so that they know, okay, maybe I still have some loopholes in my study and, you know, that is the way they refine their uh, learning performance. And this is just like some of the pictures we have uh, taken from the book camp. And this is like uh, a lecture on economics theory. And also this is me uh, talking about business presentation skills. And also we have this, you know, a lecture on how economics becomes uh, the foundation of policymaking because we just want, you know, students to know that, you know, everything in economics should be tied, should be connected to our daily life.
And also this is like a lecture on auction theory because you know this is actually the idea, the concept behind the 2020 Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences. So we also want them to know how you know, everything relevant to economics born or kept in mind because you know this is like a universe. So as much as they learn, they would know how small they are. They would know actually they should, you know, learn more and they can be stay humble they can stay uh you know you know just always they, they can keep the mindset that they should always learn new things because you know this is just like a universe and yeah this is how they brainstorm on the business case and together with this they also practice uh practice practice and practice uh, again and again, so that they can ensure that they have, you know, really good verbal expression, really good quality in showing uh, data in a visualized way or uh, whatever like that, so that they can also like this, this is also very interesting, they recorded themselves and also they watched themselves, you know, presenting. And this would be so embarrassing, as you know, you know, just like looking at you reading something or announcing something, and that's embarrassing. But this is what they have to do because they can know how well or how badly they did. You know, this is just like a good chance for them to you know, have this kind of reflection. And this is me during the field work uh, of a book camp. We went to a community. Uh, where there was concentration of the underprivileged so that we could think about, you know, how social enterprises could be possible in uh, the Taiwanese society or, in, or under uh, the law or regulations in Taiwan. So this is one of the photos we took. And yeah, this is quite important. It's just like after everything we have, ever, after we, we do everything. We also want our database to be well established. So this is why we also have our longitudinal da database. We want our uh, annual report to be, actually they are public. You know, you can go to our website. I will just provide a QR code for uh, everybody later to, you know, to link to the website. And also we would, we also make our past questions public, totally public. So you can, you know, get the access to all our questions uh, with the link I, I will provide later. And also we want students to share uh, their future careers, including their future admissions for even their future jobs, but they are too young to have future jobs. So yeah, this is also one of our wishes for the future. And we also organize, we organize IO camps. This is not, uh, this is, oh, I have to say, this has nothing to do with the IO body. This is just like name of what we uh, have done. Okay, so this is like, you know, for students or contestants to go back and share their experience in the IEO or in the TEO or Taiwanese Economics Olympia, and also give lectures or share, you know, hands-on experiences uh, with, you know, newcomers, with younger students. And also, you know, the most important thing is we want empirical data. We want this to be influential in the government. So that maybe you know we can play an important role in future changes in economics and education in Taiwan. So this is why we have done a lot of these so that we can ensure that we are experienced. We are you know with you know uh, we are very close to students and we know what they need. And yeah, we still have more. We still have just like what I have mentioned. We have the IEO camps in winter. We have public workshops in autumn, and we also have on campus. We also work with local schools and or international schools as well to, to organize workshops and talks. And these are contents we usually uh, include in this kind of event. So we have panels, we have business case study, we also have lectures, and we also have field trips because we really value this. And also we want them to have uh, their uh, their sense of groups. So this is why we have group-based problem-solving marathons so that they can, you know, little by little know that, you know, maybe working with timids, working with a group is something that is important, that is essential in their daily life, in their future life as well. And this is just like some of the scenes, uh, the events we have ever conducted, they talk, they are talking about economics-relevant themes or uh, ongoing issues in Taiwan or in the world. 
and together, uh, this is like a TEO problem solving workshop. So this is like a business case problem and we want them to you know, uh, understand, we want them to you know, uh, sort of understand the situation of current uh, convenience store industry and also they should provide solutions or suggestions for the industry as well. And this is like uh, one of my colleagues and she, she, she went to a public school and share her experience in economics teaching. And that is, you know, the scene during that period of time. And yeah, this is also one of our you know, special events. We want students to know that actually, you know, uh, economics plays an important role in our daily life. So we try our best to localize economics. For example, in Taipei, we have a lot of like hot spring areas, hot spring towns. So we want them to analyze these towns so that they can know maybe there are some correlation between the study of the economy and as well as you know uh, their tourist experience in these hot spring towns. So for example, we talked about uh, externalities caused by hot spring businesses, for example, hotels or tourists or whatever environmental impacts uh, tourists have led to uh, in such you know, hot spring areas. Together, we also organize you know, brainstorming uh, sessions for students to talk about you know, such issues about you know, the externalities for environmental impacts caused by uh, our uh, hot spring tourism in Taiwan or in Taipei. And they also draw a diagram or draw a map to show, okay, where uh, problems have arisen. And yeah, also they have to show their uh, understanding of you know different issues so that they can you know just you know, correlate them together and make sure they have a an all faceted you know uh, solution for a certain place it is not just you know something that is just a small point we also want them to have the comprehensive idea of uh, how to solve a problem should they should also think systematically to figure out uh, solutions for uh, different places on the basis of their learning of economics. So yeah, on and all, so keeping aspiration is what we always want to you know, maintain or we all, all we, uh, uh, everything we want to keep in our mind. So we organize everything with our aspirations. We try our best to, uh, to, to, to uh, you know, sort of like uh, provide new approaches we also create new combinations so that people or students can find it so interesting to learn economics. And also we really value the idea of inclusion. So this is why we have a lot of you know, workshops for topic events. These are you know, sometimes so overwhelming because we still have our other you know, jobs. My colleagues and I have a lot of you know, other things to do in our daily life. But you know, just like what I say over uh, what I list over here. There are ups and downs as we, as we make everything possible, but you know, smiles. Smiles on kids are the best reward, you know, for doing all these, for making all these possible. Yeah, so this is the very end of my presentation. I hope it is not too long for you. I know some of the uh, time zones are very late at night. So yeah, that's my uh, presentation. And if you have any questions, you can just ask me later or if you can also write an email to our official uh, uh, email so that uh, we can provide some further information including this presentation file for all of you. Thank you so much and you know on the top right there is a uh, QR code and that is our official website. Our official website is 100% bilingual in Chinese and English so you can you know get to know uh, ourselves, uh, you can get to know us like, more if you want to know our annual regulations or whatever materials we have provided, we have shared on the internet. Thank you.